Welcome to our lecture on the pre-anesthetic agents. So for the pre-anesthetic agents, we are going to use, uh, we are going to deal with different groups of drugs, and we must be able you know, to familiarize with these different agents, and to also to be familiarized with the combinations that are used uh, during the induction of anesthesia. So what are pre-anesthetic agents? So basically when we say pre-anesthetic agents, these are drugs that are administered to an animal before general anesthesia. They can either be a single drug or a combination of drugs. The dosages are adjusted according to the patient's need and health status. Why do we give a pre-anesthetic agent an animal before it will be anesthetized? So the first reason is uh, we intend not to cough or sedate an excited fractious or a vicious animal. So of course, when we are going to, to do this, we have to also consider you know, the, the need of the patient of that particular, uh, in terms of the dose, as well as the health status of the animal. The important reason why is that uh, the, the administration of the pre-anesthetic agent it is important to counteract the effects of other injectable or inhalant anesthetics. So if the ideal agents being used for anesthesia produce effects of hypersalivation, example you know, is the ketamine and uh, also bradycardia as in opioids, atropine can be given because it can treat both side effects. So again, ketamine is an injectable anesthetic. It is an anesthetic that can induce hypersalivation. We also have an opioid. Opioids can induce the bradycardia. And in order to counteract these effects, we can administer um, a pre-anesthetic agent that is an anticholinergic drug. And this is the what we call atropine. So atropine will enable you know, to counteract the hypersalivation and bradycardia. It is also important to reduce the amount of general anesthetics required. So when we are going to use low doses of pre-anesthetics and general anesthetics in combination to reduce the effects on the animal from each uh, drug, so this is what we call balanced anesthesia. So basically in veterinary medicine, this, is, this refers also to the use of mixture of drugs such as the such that the advantages of the small amounts of the drugs used without having to contend with the disadvantages of large doses of any one drug. So in this uh, practice, now the patient receives a combination of the sedatives and anesthetic agents based on its body weight and best suited to the patient's individual needs. So for example, uh, an example of this is when we are going to combine a pre-anesthetic sedative and an analgesic uh, by injection followed by an injection, injectable induction agent. And after that, we can use an inhalant anesthetic to maintain the anesthesia. So in this example, we are going to use a different kinds of drugs. We use the different uh, groups of drugs to be able to uh, produce, for example, tranquilization, analgesia, and uh, as well as sedation before we are going to induce no anesthesia and before we are going to maintain no that anesthesia. So in, the, in this case, we are going no, to lower the chances that the animal would acquire adverse effects now from the uh, administration of a large dose of a single drug. Anesthetic medications are, are also important to reduce pain and discomfort. So we have uh, those anesthetics that are uh, pre-medic, pre-anesthetic agents that are analgesics. And we also have those uh, pre-anesthetics that are um, anxiolytics. So they will reduce, for example, the uh, anxiety. So if the anesthetic procedure is brief, the pre-medications may still be in effect during recovery. So there are also other... Uh, other forms wherein the pre-anesthetics can be used aside from surgery and anesthesia. So for example, 
The pre-anesthetic agents can also be used to calm the nervous patients for travel, reducing the aggressiveness during a physical exam. They can also be used for minor procedures, thunderstorm anxiety, and aside from that, they can also be used as an antiemetic and cough suppressant. Here's a summary of the important reasons why we give pre-anesthetic agents. The most important, uh, the first one here is uh, we give pre-anesthetic medications in order to calm or sedate excited animals. Of course, this is important because we have to get the animals now from uh, potentially being awake, excited and nervous to being unconscious. So this is uh, important, for example, when we are uh, trying to put an IV catheter on a certain animal and induce anesthesia without any tranquilizer or sedative used. If we do that, now of course, if we did not use no, a tranquilizer or sedative before, for example, we are going to perform an IV catheter to induce anesthesia, uh, we could expect that the animal would be very much excited, not very much hesitant, and it could also induce a much stress to the animal. So, Pre-anesthetic uh, medications or agents are very useful because before we are going to induce the animal for true anesthesia, we can calm or sedate that animal first in order to reduce you know, the stress of the animal as well as the stress of the uh, handler. Another very important reason is we, when we are using pre-anesthetic medications, we minimize the adverse drug effects. And uh, of course, this, this is uh, true you know, because when we use pre-anesthetic medications, we reduce the dose of the concurrent drugs. So again, in the use of pre-anesthetic agents, we use a combination of drugs rather than a single drug. So when we use um, a combination of drugs, of course, you know, we also reduce the dose of that particular drug that we are using in that combination. So when we are reducing the dose of the drug, we will also you know, subsequently minimize the adverse drug effects of that particular drug. And um, we generally use you know, a combination of drugs, again, you know, so that we can use a lower doses of everything. And by using lower doses, we got a decrease in the incidence of side effects or adverse effects as well. So this is also, you know, the again, the concept of the balanced anesthesia. When, for example, when we are using a pre-anesthetic agent to induce or to relieve pain, to calm the animal, to sedate the animal. So we use you know, a small doses of that particular drug in order to induce anesthesia, in, in order to uh, calm the animal before inducing anesthesia. Then after that, we would use, you know, an, for example, an inhalant gas in order to maintain anesthesia. So by doing this, we are using uh, different groups of drugs with different uh, functions in order to minimize the development of the adverse drug reactions to the animal. Another is um, Pre-anesthetic medications would also induce a small, smoother anesthetic induction and recovery. So again, um, we can just imagine you know, if we are not giving pre-anesthetic medications such as a tranquilizer or sedative before we are going to perform um, the administration of um, an anesthetic agent. So the patient may go through a lot of uh, excitement, nervousness, and stress before if we have not premedicated that patient. So the excitement phase will be a lot more pronounced if we did not premedicated the patient. And of course, the patient will expectedly recover horribly in that situation. So one rule of thumb, how an animal goes down is usually how they wake up. So if you have a really hard time getting an animal under anesthesia, 
they're also going to have really hard time when they wake up too. If they, uh, if they're wild going down, they will also be wild waking up. The same goes if they if they have a nice smooth induction, they are also going to have a nice smooth uh, recovery you know, when they wake up. So, um, therefore, you know, in order to have a smoother anesthetic induction and recovery, we have we can uh, it is important to administer a pre-anesthetic agent. So of course, uh, the pre-anesthetic agent also serves uh, as also serves for analgesia. There are certain uh, uh, pre-anesthetic agents that are analgesic in nature. So we have talked about you know, the concept, for example, of the wind-up pain and how to avoid it by controlling the part from the beginning. Then we got the decrease in the wind-up pain. We got to make the animals more comfortable post-operatively and recover better. Another is uh, muscle relaxation. So, for example, we can use a muscle relaxant. And this is a very big part of the anesthesia. We, of course, we need to have the animals to be relaxed prior to performing, for example, an operation. Most of the time, we include something that uh, is going to relax the muscles, the skeletal muscles. For example, we can use no, a neuromuscular blocking agent to properly uh, relax the animal before induction of anesthesia. So here, there are some important things to note when we are using pre-anesthetic agents. So pre-anesthetics are usually given about 20 minutes before the induction of anesthetic is given. Another is uh, the pre-anesthetics are usually given intramuscularly or subcutaneously, and most of the pre-anesthetics are too potent to be given via the IV route. So every pre-anesthetic has a side effect. So just like any any drug, no, every drug has also a side effect. All anesthetics are not safe for all animals, meaning that uh, certain species of animals are more sensitive to a particular uh, group of uh, pre-anesthetic agents. So we must be careful in choosing a particular agent to be administered in a particular animal because that animal might be sensitive or susceptible to the toxic effects of that particular agent. The route of administration of our pre-anesthetic medication will obviously affect the onset of action and the duration of effects. If you're going to administer the pre-anesthetic medication via the subcutaneous route, we can expect to have the slowest onset, but the drug will last longest if given via the ester route. When we are going to compare that with the intramuscular route of administration, then the drug will take effect more quickly compared to the subcutaneous route, but it, has, it will have a shorter duration, meaning that it its effect will not last that long as compared to that of the SC route. And we also have the IV route. Now, if we are going to give it IV, then the almost the, the, the onset will be fastest or the onset will be immediate. But in terms of the duration, it will have the shortest duration compared to that of the IM and SC. So it is important you not know, to know what the what your choice of route might mean to the patient. Most of our pre-anesthetic agents are uh, given via the IM route. These are the different classes of pre-anesthetic agents. We have the anticholinergics or the paras parasympatholytics. We also have the tranquilizers, the sedatives, and the opioids.